In the realm of archaeology, few sites have captured the public's imagination like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Unveiling its secrets over the last two decades has been akin to unraveling a mystery from the depths of time. With its grand structures adorned with towering T-shaped pillars dating back some 10,000 years, it defied preconceptions about the capabilities of ancient civilizations. Initially attributed to semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers gathering for ceremonial purposes, the true architects of Gobekli Tepe remain a subject of fervent debate. The spectrum of theories ranges from the plausible to the fantastical, with conjectures spanning from lost Ice Age civilizations to beings of myth and legend. Some propose the existence of an advanced society concealed from historical record, while others delve into the realms of ancient scriptures and mythology, invoking references to enigmatic entities like the Watchers or Anunnaki. Speculation even extends to extraterrestrial influences, suggesting Gobekli Tepe's origins lie beyond the confines of Earth. Today, we delve into these intriguing theories, exploring the evidence put forth to support each narrative. Join me as we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of Gobekli Tepe and the enigmatic forces that may have shaped its ancient landscape. Before diving into the captivating story that lies ahead, ensure you've clicked that subscribe and like button to join us on this enthralling journey through history. Gobekli Tepe, nestled in southern Turkey's Sanlurfa district, stands as a monumental relic of ancient human endeavor. Dating back approximately 11,000 years, the site's Level 3 unveils a striking array of circular and oval structures adorned with towering pillars. These pillars, hewn from limestone, bear intricate carvings depicting animals and symbols of profound significance. Dr. Claus Schmidt, the pioneering mind behind the site's excavation, proposed a captivating narrative. He envisioned Gobekli Tepe not merely as a settlement, but as a sacred ground, drawing nomadic hunter-gatherers from far and wide to partake in elaborate rituals. Schmidt's hypothesis posited these structures as temples, where communal gatherings intertwined with construction endeavors and ceremonial practices. Despite its classification as an early Neolithic site, Schmidt diverged from convention by asserting that the site's inhabitants remained steadfastly hunter-gatherers, untouched by the advent of agrarian lifestyles. Instead, he envisioned periodic congregations, perhaps seasonal in nature, where labor and reverence intertwined in the shadow of these monumental edifices. Schmidt's vision painted a picture of communal effort, suggesting that the monumental task of erecting these towering pillars required the collective labor of hundreds if not thousands of individuals. In this paradigm, Gobekli Tepe emerges not merely as a testament to human ingenuity, but as a nexus where spirituality and communal endeavor converged in the ancient landscape. Claus Schmidt proposed a groundbreaking idea challenging conventional beliefs. He asserted that organized religion could precede agriculture, suggesting that societies with religious specialists emerged before farming. This perspective reshaped our understanding of early civilizations. Over the past two decades, numerous sites akin to Gobekli Tepe have been unearthed in its vicinity, unveiling a pattern that challenges the uniqueness of Gobekli. Yet a lingering question persists. Could simple hunter-gatherers, without the backdrop of agriculture, construct such a remarkable site as Gobekli Tepe along with its neighboring structures? Critics argue against the plausibility of hunter-gatherers, even in sizable numbers, constructing these sophisticated edifices. According to some, it seemed implausible that some monumental structures could be built without the influence of a more advanced society, either directly constructing or guiding local hunter-gatherers in the intricate art of construction. This debate raises intriguing questions about the capabilities of ancient communities and the intertwined relationship between religion, society, and technological prowess. Various theories emerge to explain the mysterious origins of colossal megalithic structures. While some speculate about extraterrestrial intervention, others delve into the realm of lost pre-Hellocene civilizations. Authors like Andrew Collins link these ancient civilizations to the mythical watchers of the Book of Enoch and the legendary Garden of Eden. However, the Book of Genesis remains silent on such grand architectural endeavors attributed to Adam and Eve. Another proponent of the lost pre-Holocene civilization theory is Graham Hancock. According to this line of thought, a technologically advanced society met its demise due to a catastrophic event, possibly a cometary impact or burst, sparking the Younger Dryas climate episode around 13,000 years ago. 
Sweeping narratives of cataclysmic destruction and lost civilizations dominate these speculative discussions. Attributing Gobekli Tepe to a technologically advanced Pleistocene civilization seems implausible, considering the extensive evidence archaeologists have uncovered for contemporary hunter-gatherer sites. Such theories often make negative assumptions about the capabilities of these ancient communities. There is a prevailing notion that hunter-gatherers were remarkably unsophisticated, a viewpoint challenged by recent discoveries. These hypotheses hinge on Claus Schmidt's idea that Gobekli Tepe and similar sites were not Neolithic villages, presenting a significant departure from conventional understanding. Additionally, they assume a perceived difficulty in the transportation and erection of the substantial T-shaped pillars, overlooking the nuanced aspects of this process. Examining these issues reveals a complex narrative, where assumptions about the limitations of hunter-gatherers and the nature of ancient structures intersect, prompting a re-evaluation of the prevailing theories surrounding Gobekli Tepe. The notion that hunter-gatherer communities were primitive traces back to 19th-century perspectives on cultural evolution. Figures like Lewis Henry Morgan juxtaposed what they labeled as savagery against civilization, deeming the latter the pinnacle of human progress. Even in the mid-20th century, V. Gordon Childe outlined characteristics of advanced societies, highlighting monumental structures and scientific prowess, as exemplified by astronomical alignments at Gobekli Tepe. However, this outdated paradigm paints an incomplete picture of hunter-gatherer, collector-fisher societies, akin to Hobbes' grim portrayal of prehistoric lives as nasty, brutish, and short. Such bias diminishes the remarkable capabilities of these societies, reducing them to primitive stereotypes rather than recognizing their profound knowledge and skills. In the depths of the late Pleistocene and early Hellocene, hunter-gatherer societies flourished with remarkable sophistication. Their toolkits, though often preserved only in stone, bone, or antler, were intricately crafted, incorporating various materials. These resourceful individuals were adept at hunting formidable prey like bison, oxen, and mammoths, employing innovative techniques for the transportation of valuable resources such as meat, hides, and flint. Evidence suggests their prowess extended beyond land, with some possessing seaworthy vessels capable of embarking on extensive voyages, exemplified by the Mesolithic inhabitants of Franch the Cave, voyaging to distant Milos for tuna and obsidian. The audacity of early human exploration is exemplified by the ancient migrants who traversed treacherous straits to reach Australia and New Guinea over 40,000 years ago. Additionally, among certain hunter-gatherer groups, such as those along the northwest coast of North America, architectural marvels like plank houses and towering cedar totem poles were erected without the assistance of a lost civilization. These revelations dispel notions of primitive simplicity, underscoring the ingenuity and technical prowess of many hunter-gatherer societies throughout history. In scrutinizing the origins of Gobekli Tepe, an intriguing question arises. Were its creators truly hunter-gatherers? Schmidt's assertion, initially compelling, quickly unravels under closer examination. His portrayal of early Neolithic settlements was somewhat skewed, and crucial evidence from Gobekli Tepe itself was downplayed. Among the plethora of artifacts on Earth, sickle blades feature prominently, numbering in the tens of thousands. While versatile in function, these blades were primarily employed for harvesting crops like wheat and barley. Similarly ubiquitous are grinding tools such as mortars, pestles, and grinding slabs, indicative of seed processing. Recent studies by Laura Dietrich corroborated their use in processing plant materials, including barley and wheat. Furthermore, the abundance of butchered animal bones, notably from mouflon or wild sheep, hints at a transition towards animal management or domestication. The presence of roofed oval structures and smaller, likely residential buildings, further supports the argument for Gobekli Tepe as an early Neolithic settlement. In light of these findings, Schmidt's contention that the site lacked Neolithic village characteristics is refuted. Comparative analysis with established Neolithic sites lends weight to this conclusion, underscoring the complexity of Gobekli Tepe's societal fabric. Recent excavations at Gobekli Tepe have revealed signs of early farming alongside the traditional hunting and gathering practices. This discovery challenges previous assumptions about the lifestyles of its inhabitants. Uncovering morphologically domesticated cereals provides compelling evidence of their agricultural involvement. 
Such findings are exceptionally rare, highlighting the significance of this revelation. Moreover, the process of domestication, as indicated by genetic studies, spanned centuries. This underscores the gradual transition from hunting and gathering to farming. However, farming did not completely replace traditional practices. Even during the pre-pottery Neolithic period, hunting remained a crucial part of the economy. At various sites across southern Turkey to the southern Levant, archaeologists have unearthed a diverse array of animal remains. While domesticated goats were present, hunted gazelle, wild cattle, donkeys, and boars were also prevalent. Small animals like turtles and hares further underscored the continued importance of hunting. This evidence paints a nuanced picture of Neolithic life, where farming coexisted with traditional hunting and gathering practices, shaping the early societies of the region. Throughout history, hunting persisted beyond the Neolithic era, serving not only as a means to supplement agricultural diets, but also as a pursuit of leisure and social standing. In Neolithic societies, hunting held a dual significance, contributing substantially to both the economy and sustenance. Discussing hunter-gatherers or farmers in the context of Gobekli Tepe oversimplifies the intricate economic dynamics at play. In reality, the inhabitants engaged in a diverse range of activities, including hunting, gathering, and early-stage cereal cultivation, forming the foundation of their economy. It's unjust to underestimate the knowledge and capabilities of late Levantine hunter-gatherers, as they possessed valuable expertise, including the ability to handle sizable stones. Labeling the people of Gobekli Tepe solely as hunter-gatherers overlooks the complexity of their society, akin to oversimplifications made about other early Neolithic settlements. Whether employing techniques reminiscent of Easter Island or those depicted in contemporary imagery, the craftsmanship exhibited by the residents of Gobekli Tepe is undeniably remarkable, yet well within their skill set and resources. As we embark on our exploration of Gobekli Tepe, we are met with a journey that challenges our assumptions and prompts us to reconsider the narratives of the past. The imposing pillars and intricate archaeological findings of this ancient site compel us to delve deeper, seeking to unravel the enigmatic threads of its history. Yet, amidst our contemplation of Gobekli Tepe's mysteries, we confront the limitations of our understanding. The true creators of this monumental marvel remain obscured by the passage of time, their identities veiled in obscurity. And so, it is in the unanswered questions, rather than the definitive answers, that we find the allure of Gobekli Tepe. May Gobekli Tepe endure as a symbol of the brilliance and resilience of ancient civilizations, serving as a poignant reminder of the vast expanse of human history and the untold secrets that await discovery.